John chapter 8, verse 28 reads, Then Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am, they add the word he, which is fine, and I do nothing of myself, they add the word that. I just like noting that. It just says, I am, and I do nothing of myself. He's a person of God. He doesn't do anything of himself. But, as my Father taught me, I speak these things. He's one of the people of God, persons of God, one of the distinct persons of God as the most common doctrine, theology of Christianity will tell you. And yet, the Father had to teach him something. How is that? Why are we so devoted to separating our God, to dividing him up? There's, there's entire books written about it, about the fact that our God is not an individual in whose likeness all of us individuals are made. There is a pattern, himself, and he made us after that pattern. We're not perfect like him. He can't make other gods. But he made us with certain characteristics, and one of them being individuality. Why is that something people fight against and teach against? When clearly he said over and over again, that he is one. He is this one person you can go to. It's a, it's a type of rebellion and it's a type of control. Because if you can control, I'm talking about this, this polytheism, which is what it really is, of the Trinitarian, of the tritheism of that belief system, is you have control. That's why he was so against them going, well, one of the many reasons why he was so against them going after other gods, because they always believed in these different gods who weren't one because then they as worshipers could control every aspect of their gods because they chose which one they would commune with which one they would worship which one they would talk to pray to ask for things from which god the sun god the wind god the earth god the sun god the father god the spirit god you see what i'm saying that's what this is about. It's about control. You control your God in that system. And that's something you shouldn't be wanting to do. You should be happy that he can be who he wants to be. And the Trinity is a way of you defining him and keeping him in a box. Even though you say it's them. I mean, they come up with all these things. There can't be love without God having others to love before he created us. And all this stuff. That's just pure nonsense. It makes no sense at all. It leads to stuff like this where you have to explain that one God taught another God. But they're not different gods. They're all the same substance and all this different language they come up with. No. Just admit it. You want to control your God. You want to do the same thing the pagans did. Just in a different form. That's what it is. And that's bondage. That is definitely a bondage. Just as much as religion is. You want to get free from that. You want to get to know the individual who you, is your God. That's where true freedom is. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You shall know the Son and the Son shall make you free. Why would that make you free, set you free? Because when you find out who the Son really is, you find out He is your one and only God beside whom there is no other. That's why I'll say from time to time that the answer to so many questions when you're trying to figure something out isn't all the technicalities and the doctrines and theologies. It's, it's looking at it through the lens of how could God love us so much? In the pagan system or in the control system, we explain it like, well, obviously God couldn't be in heaven and here at the same time. God couldn't be getting baptized. So we'll invent this other person, create this other person. I can understand that and make that all work in my theology and my doctrines and my my particular denominator, whatever. Whereas, when you look at it through the lens of how could he love us so much? How could God love us so much that the creator of the universe himself would simply become another person like me? As in, now he knows what it feels like to be a man, to be a human being, to struggle, to be hungry, to be frustrated, to be alone, to be abandoned. He himself, that one God, knows that. It's not one of the other people God saying, Hey, Father, let me tell you about what it's like to be one of them. No. No. So, 
as the man, yeah, he was taught something, but he makes it clear in the same sentence that he doesn't do anything. He doesn't do anything. It's the Father who does everything. It's incredibly liberating to know that, that that is your God. He is your God. You're one and only, the one and only. Yes, I'll say it. Even the place where we came from, who call themselves oneness because they're just as religion-based and pagan and idolatrous as any of them, they just would not say Jesus is the Father. I mean, if you really pushed them, they would. But I'll say it. Jesus is the Father. Jesus is my Father. When I go to heaven, I see my Father. I'm going to see Jesus. And so are you if you go there. I'm not saying you're not if you believe that. I'm just saying you're not going to know him until then. Why not know him now? There is only one God. That's why he said that so many times in the Old Testament. And people say, well, why didn't he say it? Why was it ambiguous? Well, try to see it from his viewpoint. He'd been saying it for thousands of years, literally thousands of times, and yet so few people believed him. If people want to believe lies, that's their choice, and they will bear the fruit of it. Our God is who he is. You can believe that, or you can reject that. We simply suggest you believe it. So you might know this one. You don't have to think about which one to pray to, which one to worship, which one you're hearing from, which one you need to talk to at any given moment. There is no which one. There is only the one. The one. Jesus Christ. Him and Him alone. Your Father chose to come into the world as a man, as His own Son. The Son of God is simply the answer to the question of, what if God became a man? The answer is Jesus. And now there is no what if. And we understand why, because he loves us. That's why, in Jesus' name, amen.